And we're back live here on the Mountain West Network for Mountain West Men's Basketball Media Days, powered by Air Force Reserve. I'm Jesse Kurtz. It's my pleasure now to take you to Albuquerque, New Mexico, the campus of the University of New Mexico, and bring in the head coach of the Lobos, Paul Weir. Coach, great to see you. I know there's some tough times right now, but I appreciate you making some time for us to talk some basketball. Tough times for everybody, but uh, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong line. Um, yes, no, we're, I'm excited to be here. Uh, it, it being a, a different ramp up to the season, how have you been able to in some way, shape or form? And what's been your strategy in trying to keep the guys fresh as the season is right around the corner? Oof. Fresh is probably the wrong word. Um, trying to get them even just remotely prepared is our biggest challenge right now. It's uh, it's it's I think brought us very close together off the court. It's the on the court part that we're being as creative and aggressive as we can and finding ways to get us prepped for the upcoming year. Appreciate it, Coach. Uh, if you have a question for Paul Weir, go ahead and enter our queue. Raise your hand. We'll have a question and one follow-up question per media member. Uh, we, our first stop will be Will Weber with the Santa Fe New Mexican. Hello, can you hear me, Paul? I can. Hey, uh, just on certain times around the state, Bernalillo County, and really your football team had to leave New Mexico in order to have any kind of a season. And so it raises the question of if or when the basketball season starts for UNM, what's that going to look like? Do you go to Texas? Do you go to Vegas? Where is it going to be? How is it going to look? I wish I was the authoritative voice on something like that, but there's so many different people and, and layers of, of leadership here at UNM that are involved in, in decisions like that from, uh, athletic directors, presidents, regents, doctors. Um, I, I might have my own ideas of what we could or should do, but they're not remotely qualified enough to be making those calls right now. So a lot of those things that are getting talked about uh, end up working their way down to me, but it really isn't my decision at this point. I'm, we're all, me and our team, just kind of waiting uh, for our leaders to kind of let us know what we can do, what we can't do, and, and where it goes from here. You know, the, the season starts for you in a couple of weeks and, and the schedule hasn't even been talked about. And so I'm curious, what does the schedule look like for you in the next couple of weeks? And are you able to practice at all before then? Both to be determined, I would say. We, we don't have, uh, I mean, as the current health orders stand right now, we would not be able to, to host a game here. And obviously with the travel quarantine coming back into the state becomes an issue, which as you talked about with our football team has, has forced them to be pretty creative right now. And I'm sure we're going to have to be just as agile as we kind of go forward, but there's a lot of people that go into those decisions. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself of what I, how I think this might look. And then obviously, as you said, uh, our state and, and really the, the entire country is kind of going through a wave right now. And there's lots of different teams and programs and universities that are kind of having to make pretty big decisions on, uh, the virus, their student bodies, their campuses, and, and their athletic teams. So we're in that group as well. Uh, hasn't obviously been um, ideal to this point, but nor nor is it something that we would have expected to be ideal just based on how things are going around the country. Thank you, Will. Our next stop for you, Coach, will be Lee Faria with KOB-TV in Albuquerque. Unmute your mic, please, Lee. Mute there we go. How you there doing, we go. coach? Good. You? I'm, I'm okay. I, um, were you throwing kind of a curveball uh, when you found out that you had a couple of players test positive? Yeah, it's, you know, I've been thinking of some good analogies and, and I, I feel like throughout the, the summer and the fall, we prided on telling our team we had to do more with less. Other teams were able to practice. Other teams were able to do things that, that we couldn't do. It was kind of, going to a fight with, with one arm tied behind your back. And then when, when something like this comes along, it feels like you got two arms tied behind your back. So now you're just learning how to kick. And um, it just comes with the territory right now. I'm sure other programs or teams will have to go through similar situations. When you couple with kind of what we've had outside of just the, the, the COVID um, uh, viruses, I guess, that, that we've had to deal with, um, it becomes pretty problematic, but we've tried to stay incredibly positive as a team. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to do that going forward. It's a learning experience for all of us. 
Let me piggyback off Will. Is there anything in the pre-conference schedule that is set in stone at this point? No. Thank you, Lee. Next question from Jeff Grammer with the Albuquerque Journal. Hey, Paul, I know we've uh, you know talked off and on about this kind of stuff, but um, everyone else asked you questions that you say administrators have to make you know above you are ultimately going to be making the decisions about schedules and locations and and all that kind of stuff. I'm curious though what your role as a coach is in terms of the preparation. At some point. Less than two weeks from now, the college basketball season is starting. At some point, when do you guys all get together and say, we have not prepared our team enough? COVID aside, um, if you can in this crazy time, COVID aside, your team needs X amount of preparation to be healthy and safely prepared for a season. At what point do you guys just determine whether or not your team is even safely and adequately, adequately ready to play a season? That's an excellent question. One I brought up with our, our team doctor uh, and training staff last night uh, as far as just the propensity to injury and just the overall well-being of the student athletes. I think the balance is you want to give all these kids the best opportunities they can to go out and compete and have fun and play the game that they love and have the opportunity to, to compete. So even if we had to play tomorrow night and we've had – I think a total of one full team practice um, since last spring. Um, is it is it worth that? Is it worth saying, you know what, who cares? This is about the kids. This is about the student athletes. We go out and we play and we let them enjoy that experience. And what's the balance of that? And that they're basically, or us being unprepared for that competition. And that's something that we have to continue to discuss as this whole thing meanders through a, a road that I don't think anyone knows where it quite leads right now, not only for us, but nationwide and, and league wide. As we go through that, I think we'll continue to ask that question. Um, and I think as long as what's best for the student athletes is kind of the, the barometer of what we decide to do, that that answer hopefully at the time will, will be the right one. L let me ask you something that doesn't have COVID involved in it for a change. Um, you got obviously some freshmen that are going to be a big part of this team. Um, big roles uh, to maybe even three get start at some point this season is, is my guess. I, I know you have a better grasp of it than I obviously, but what, what do you expect out of a guy like a Byron Matos and a, and a Javante Johnson? I mean, I, I guess we've asked you that question before here in Albuquerque, but I'm curious what's progressed since maybe a couple of weeks ago, the last time we were able to talk about this, are those two guys still kind of progressing at a pace where you think those two freshmen are going to be potential starters in this league? Um, I think theoretically, everything you're saying is probably it would be echoed in and around our program. The issue we have is, you know, we've had three contact team practices. So it's really hard to evaluate where these guys might be when, when you can't really watch them go against anybody else. So, yes, I, I hope that's the case. We're continuing, hopefully, if we end up progressing to a point where we can competitively practice and play, that those guys are on that trajectory. But I think, as we all know, when you really start playing and you get into a competitive environment, uh, somebody that maybe you didn't expect much of comes out of nowhere and thinks, wow, this kid's really good when, when the lights come on, quote unquote, or things get live. And then other guys sometimes struggle with that. And then that goes on its own journey. And sometimes bottoming, bottoming out a little bit is a good thing. And you humble yourself and you kind of recreate and, and re-engineer things that you need to work on. And then other guys who look good kind of fall back. And it's, it's an exciting process as a coach to kind of work through that with kids and watch them grow and develop. And I'm hopeful that what you're saying is, is right. I think we all are. But it's, it's hard probably right now to say, yes, those are, those are going to be the key cogs in our, in our system. Thank you, Jeff. Next up, the Casper Star Tribune and Davis Potter. Hey, Paul, uh, Wyoming hired a, a new coach in Jeff Linder. I'm curious, are, are you familiar with him at all? And if so, what do you think about that hire for them? Uh, you know, obviously from afar, I uh, have respected him. Um, you know, coaching is a pretty small fraternity. So usually if you don't know someone, you, you know someone that knows someone. So I think we, we do have some mutual connections um, through different coaches who have always spoken very highly of him. I've never prepared to coach against his team. We, we haven't coached Northern Colorado when he's been there. So I don't have a, a, a lot of specifics to kind of give. And unfortunately, haven't spent much time digging into a lot of other teams right now. I couldn't tell you much about their 
their team, their roster, and and what they look like outside of uh, of the players that were on last year's team. So I wish them well. I, I hope for for his sake and our league's sake that they have a great team and and uh, look forward to coaching and preparing against them as this season unfolds. Thank you, Davis. Uh, KRQE's Jared Chester is up next. What's going on, Coach? Hey, man. Um, so, um, so earlier on, you talked to, to us, the Albuquerque media, about getting a lot of guys in preparation for what's going on right now, the pandemic and stuff, and the potential that it could have on the roster. With this new, um, you know, the new schedule with the two games in three days, do you think that'll play to you, you know, better in, in uh, your favor? I think theoretically it would have. I think the the style that we want to play, the amount of players we want to play, and the depth we've kind of built on our roster, not only what I would consider quality playing depth, but just the size of our team as well. We, we did it all with this in mind. I think the part you can't control is just the contact tracing, the virus itself, where you might have something set up and a day later that that's completely disappeared. So – um, I think theoretically, yes, I, 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 the way it went, I, if this was a, any other year would really uh, benefit our, our ball club. Um, but given what's going on now, I don't think any of us can predict who this is going to help or who this is going to hurt as the season unfolds because players could be kind of coming in and out of, of eligibility to play uh, at any time. Yeah, so I understand that, you know, coaches always say, silence the distractions, you know, focus on what you can control and stuff. But obviously that's kind of, it's a little different this year. So I'm just wondering how, as a coach, how do you handle the frustration that is obviously being put upon the, the kids? And I'm sure it's been different for you, but as a coach, how do you handle that with this group? I think all of us have been, you know, we knew going into this, we were going to have to teach a lot. It's a young team. Uh, I think we're 10 freshmen and sophomores, uh, a lot of new faces, so I think the, the coaching staff and the program overall knew we had a lot of young guys with an, a lot of inexperience that we were going to have to coach and teach and motivate and, and, you know, have them learn the game of basketball. And it's really just, you know, transcended into off the court as well, just teaching them to deal with adversity, have a positive attitude, look forward, don't dwell on the past, don't dwell on the negatives, control the, the controllables and, and just kind of go from there. So it's been a great experience for me as a, as a mentor, uh, as, a, as a leader of young men. I think it's been a good experience for all of us to come together and bond. I'm sure that's something that's shared by a lot of other programs as well. And we just have to keep chipping away at that, that there is a life lesson in this. We are going to grow from this. And when we get to basketball, we're just going to swing as hard as we can at, at whoever happens to be in front of us. Thank you, Jared. Up next, Mark Ziegler of the San Diego Union Tribune. Coach, uh, w where is Moriarty, New Mexico, and, and how long were you there, and, and how did that work, and why are you not there anymore? Um, Moriarty, New Mexico is about a, about a 45-minute drive away in what is called a – and, and I, I'm going to give you my best interpretation, and if I misspeak medically, then – um, I'll, I'll probably get in trouble, but I'll give you my best uh, layman's version of what, of how I interpreted it came about. Um, they are in what's called a green county in the state of New Mexico, which means that the case numbers are below a certain threshold, which makes it a safe place to practice. We are not in one of those. Uh, when, when it became this way around the state, they have these maps that come out that kind of show you where red and, and green counties are. Uh, we looked into Moriarty, which is in another county, 45 minutes away of going there to, to have a practice. Uh, going into going to Moriarty, we had only had the ability to practice one time as a team. So uh, our administration and leadership came up with the idea of to go there, to stay in adherence with the protocols that we agreed to with our state. It was a green county. We went there. Uh, we got two practices in and unfortunately came, had to come back. And it is now uh, defined as a red county. So there is no going back to Moriarty. And it was an amazing experience when we went. Uh, we enjoyed it. Uh, had a lot of good time together. Doubled our, doubled our total team practice time, which was really cool. And uh, where this goes from here, I don't know. But I think for all of us, it was a, it was a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, as a follow up, you've talked about you know, the various scenarios and you have to wait for, for leadership to sort of decide. But uh, is the chance that you will not play a basketball season on the table right now? 
I have no, I don't believe so. I would not like to think so. I think playing, not playing basketball in the, in the state of New Mexico is a New Mexican, uh, just like playing in the pit would not playing in the pit would feel the same way. But again, this, this virus and our society and communities have a lot of things to think about. And I'm, we're all kind of at that mercy and we have some great leaders, doctors, administrators here that are making those decisions and, Hopefully they're going to do everything um, in, in, in everyone's best interest, not just ours. And we're just waiting to find out when we can practice, hopefully, and, and then hopefully when we can play. Thank you, Mark. Next up, Brent Brigham of the Colorado Springs Gazette. Yeah, Coach, I'm just curious, in the short time he's been there, what, is, what has Dave Pilpovich brought to the, to the staff and the mood? Gosh, Dave is uh, awesome. I, I can't say enough about him. He has a, a incredibly engaging, uplifting personality that is contagious. I, I don't know if there's anyone that doesn't like being around him to just talk to him, learn from him, listen to him. And I think we're all looking forward to that journey. He hasn't been here very long. Obviously, he hasn't had a ton of practices to, to be around to or, or us to really dig into the basketball stuff. But just to have someone of his competency, his experience, and just his likability is uh, it, it's very welcoming right now, I think, given given the tone of this, this press conference. And with the NCAA granting an extra year of eligibility this year, with a freshman like Javante Johnson, who comes from the Colorado Springs area, would there have been talk of redshirting him because you guys haven't had a preseason? You know, you may, may or may not have non-conference games under normal circumstances. Would you have considered that? And does that rule change, you know, affect your thinking? Right now, absolutely not. He's well above that threshold. Uh, ironically, when he signed, it was something his dad had kind of brought up of, hey, I'm looking at your team and um, let's see where this goes. And usually when parents bring that up, I say, hey, let's just talk about it when he gets here and let's see how he's, go how he's doing. And thankfully, when he got here, I think we all realized right away he's, he's, he's above that, you know, I think, thinking like that. So we're really excited about him. I think the whole freshman class, this is the most talented freshman class we've had here. So to hopefully watch these guys grow and develop over the course of the year is something we're all looking forward to, including Javante. Thank you, Brent. Next stop, Isabel Gonzalez with the Lobo Lair. Hey, Coach. Nice to see you. you um, the last couple of your press conferences, you've been talking about the importance of seniors stepping up and being leaders. I think especially right now, it's important for them to, you know, be leaders off the court. Um, is there anything that may be set to the younger players regarding, you know, this quarantine stuff or the practicing things? Yeah, I think, yes, practice wise and training wise is usually when the seniors come in and, and you know, they'll talk to the freshmen about how hard, how hard the running is or the training camp is or the, the two a days are, the film are um, with what we're our, our current kind of, uh, competition is really just the virus and, and going through this, not only as a team, but probably as a society as well. So those seniors are, are really freshmen in this too, just like I am. I think we're all learning how to work through this as best we can. We have good days, we have bad days, and you just got to hope that all of us together can kind of work through it. So unfortunately, those seniors haven't quite had the opportunity to fully be seniors yet, but hopefully that day is coming. And I know you were looking specifically at Key Maggie to maybe grow a little bit from the last couple of years. Um, what have you seen from him lately? Yeah, um, Keith, unfortunately, hasn't really had a chance to, to do that for us yet. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll get him on the court soon, and he'll be able to, to do that. I think he does it socially and um, verbally amongst his teammates, but just to kind of physically get him on the court will, will be great for us. Thank you, Isabel. And our last stop for you, Coach, uh, will be a question from BJ Reigns with the Idaho Press Tribune. Hey, Coach, just doing something on Derek Alston. I know you said you hadn't really dove into the league, but you've obviously played against DA the last couple of years, the preseason player of the year. Just wondering your thoughts uh, as an opposing coach in the league, uh, you know, his talent level and obviously coming back for his senior year, uh, you know, he's going to be one of the better players in the league. Yeah, he's obviously incredibly talented, can play a lot of different positions. Um, you know, last year when, when we played Boise, um, there were some other guys that, that really hurt us, but his talent just kind of jumps off the film. Uh, you, you, you can see it right away, and uh, I'm sure Boise's really excited about what he's going to be able to do for them this season. 
Thank you, BJ. Uh, and thank you, Coach. Uh, I know, as you mentioned, tough times for everybody, but I think you're right, and I appreciate your outlook with the, the life lessons. We'll grow from this whenever that time may come. Um, good luck to you guys, and uh, hope to see you out on the basketball court real soon. I hope so, too. Thanks for having me. You bet. That's Paul Weir, the head coach of the New Mexico Lobos. We're going to let him go while we transition to bring in McQuatch Malawatch who is the lone returning starter for the New Mexico Lobos, the senior guard forward from Sydney, Australia, will join us here shortly. Quatch Malawatch, a part of a team last year that averaged 76.7 points per game, which was the second most in the Mountain West from the 2019-2020 season. We head back down to Albuquerque to bring in the senior guard forward from Sydney, Australia, McQuatch Malawatch. My man, I, I know it's it's been... You know, some time in between practices and such, but uh, when you have been out on the basketball floor, how nice has that been, and what growth have you seen from your team? Um, it's been great. Uh, right now, we know it's tough times, but um, it's great getting on the court with my new teammates and everybody, everybody else. Um, but, you know, we understand the situation we're in right now, but when we get on the court, we try to make the most of it, and it's been pretty fun so far. If you have a question for McQuatch Malawatch, you can enter our queue. We'll allow you to have one question and one follow-up question. Keep your hand up if you do have a follow-up question. Our first stop for you, McQuatch, will be the Albuquerque Journal and Jeff Grammer. McQuatch, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, how are you? I'm good, man. The, we, you and I talked in the spring, uh, uh, did a podcast with you where, where we kind of talked a little bit about um, – this off season, and this was, of course, back in the spring, where you're, you're, you guys are so isolated. There, there's no, you know, all the players went home. You, as an international um, player, you had trouble getting home at first, and then you know there was worry about whether or not you'd be able to come back because of travel issues. The, this off season's been unique that I don't think any fan can really understand, and everyone just keeps pointing to this sort of, well, just let them play, and we're about to play games again. Now you have that that's sort of been kind of thrown in the air, and you're not even able to, to, to practice yet. How are you, um, especially as a team leader, how are you handling the mental part of this? I know there's some frustration. There's probably some depression and stuff like that on the team. Those kind of things are real, and it's not something that we talk about on press conferences like this a lot. But I'm curious your role in helping the team, but also your role in, in just kind of how you're handling it personally. Yeah, I mean, we just got to understand that, you know, we're not the only one going through this situation. So, I mean, it's really mentally tough, but we understand the time we're in. And, you know, I feel like whenever we get on the court, we just try to make the most of it, like I said. Um, we can't be selfish and say, you know, we're not playing. So um, we just come in and work. And when they say we practice, we come into practice and give it everything we got. And then when they say we can't come in, um, we just stay at home. I know it's really tough, but we just got to get through it together. Well, I hope you're doing well with all that and, and all of you guys especially, but I hope you're doing well. Let me ask you just a basketball question now, though. One thing I keep, I've keep i written about a couple times now are, are these freshmen. You actually started as a freshman here, and, and I think people, you know, you're going to be a four-year guy. Um, not a lot of freshmen have actually started at UNM in recent years. It's been a while since there's been a freshman class like there is right now. Javante Johnson, Byron Matos, even Isaiah, some other guys. Um, you guys have two guys that might be starters on this roster. Can you tell me about Byron and Javante specifically and kind of what they bring, what you've seen on the court out of them? Uh, yeah, they're really talented players um, and they bring a lot of energy. They really, you know, they love their basketball, which is really good. Um, they come into work every day and I, I love that. Um, but I think they've got a, a big year coming up and hopefully we get to play so they can showcase their talent. But um, I really like both of them. They're really talented and, you know, I'm looking forward to playing with them and seeing what they can do on the basketball court. Thank you, Jeff. We will stay in Albuquerque and KRQE. Jared Chester. What's up, Quach? How you doing? Good. Hey, man. So, obviously, this is a crazy time. Um, not a lot of time for you and the players to be on the floor. How ready do you feel, in particular, just yourself, and how comfortable do you feel with this team right now, just in and physically, mentally, schematically, and just learning everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really like our team. Uh, we come in and work every day. So, And obviously right now, whenever we get to practice, uh, we just come in and try and, you know, make the most of that time. And uh, I really like, you know, our young group and the older guys that came in. 
Um, but personally, you know, uh, I just got to come in and, and work and lead these guys. Um, you know, the last couple of years, we've, you know, struggled a little bit, uh, picked up uh, towards the end. But I just got to come in and, and work and lead these guys and uh, get ready for the season if we have a season. Yeah, for sure. And um, just you personally, man, what have you really been working on? And what do you, where do you feel you've made some strides this off season? Uh, personally, I just think the the weight room. Uh, more importantly, for myself, um, just getting stronger, and um, you know, work on my game a little bit, uh, my handle a little bit, rebounding, and you know, and leadership, I guess. Thank you, Jared. Uh, we will stay in Albuquerque. Lee Faria from KOB TV. Thank you. Uh, McQuatch, um, I know in the past few years there have been times where you deferred to some of the older guys around you. Is this the season where you kind of are going to be more assertive and, and perhaps have those guys just kind of follow your lead? Yeah, um, I feel like that. Uh, you know, I've been here for four years now. I've been through a lot. Uh, so I have a little bit of, you know, experience uh, that I can pass on to the younger guys. Uh, we do have a lot of freshmen and new guys coming in. So I feel like it's my job to lead them and show them the ropes. McQuatch, do you feel like this is going to go back to the days of uh, we're going to press you from the time you get off the bus and, and uh, kind of play the entire full court? Uh, pressure? I mean, that's a good question. Uh, uh, you have to ask Paul for uh, <laughs> you have to ask Paul for that question. I can't really answer that for you. Thank you, Lee. And our final question for McQuatch Malawatch will be John Tito from Hoops HD. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, you talked a lot about uh, the leadership this year, and um, it's good to hear that you're ready to be a leader. I was curious, in terms of off-court leadership, um, your team had some problems last year with suspensions, specifically JJ and Carlton. Um, how much of a distraction is it to the team when you have starters who get suspended? And what sort of off-court leadership are you going to try to bring to your team? Um, that's a good question. Uh, right now, it's kind of hard to get together and hang out, you know, because obviously COVID. Um, but with last year's team, really, I can you know look past what happened last year. Um, that's in the past, and you know, I, I hate looking back, so I can't really talk to you about. It. You know, I can't really answer that question for you. Thank you, John. And thank you, McQuatch, for your time here today. Um, I, I, I know it's tough to get out on the basketball floor, but I know the Lobos also will be counting on you uh, on the court and off the court. Appreciate your leadership and look forward to seeing you play once again this year. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me.